25th of July 2002, um, interviewing Gordon Smith, who was the Secretary Treasurer of uh, Swinton Age Persons Centre. But we're going to talk more about Gordon's experiences during World War II. Gordon, I know that before the war you lived in Bradford. Did you actually enlist in Bradford? I was uh, in the Territorials before the war. Mm -hmm. And then we were called up mm -hmm. on the 24th of August, 1939. 1939? Yes. Mm. Where did the first send you and what was your regiment? I was in the 397 Company um, and a uh, searchlight battalion. All right. And we were sent to Bentley. Doncaster. Oh right, not very far away then. No. Uh, and was that Royal Artillery, the searchlights? Were they run by the Royal yeah. Artillery? At that time they were run by the Royal Artillery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I understand that uh, your main service was in the Far East, uh, when did you get sent to the Far East? Uh, it was in 41, 1941. Mm -hmm. uh, we was waiting for transit. Mm. Uh, and we went, uh, we were taken to Liverpool and put on a, a troop carrier. A troop carrier, yes. It was the Monica Bermuda. Right. Uh, en route to uh, Basra. Yes. The uh, Japanese bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. Right, so you were sailing out then before the attack on Pearl Harbor? Yeah, yes, yes. Right. We, we were going to Basra. Yes, in, which is now in southern Iraq. Mm, mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, we went to Durban, pulled in at Durban. Yes. And they t in th for a couple, two or three days, and they transferred us to an old troop carrier. Mm -hmm. And we set sail from there December 24th, 1941. Right. With a convoy of um, warships escorting us. So you got the news of the attack on Pearl Harbour while you were in South Africa? Were you in South Africa when you heard No, we were, we were on the sea, high sea. Right, okay. We didn't know while we got into Durban that we were going to Singapore. Right, you got diverted to Singapore after uh, the... After the... Right, declaration of war on Japan. declaration of war on Japan. And so, in, in, on Singapore, were you on the island of Singapore at first? For a short time, yes. And then, did you move on to the mainland of Malaya? Was that the... Uh... No. No? We had no equipment with us, as it had all gone to Basra. Right. It's all gone to the Middle East. Yes. Uh, so we had to get um, equipment from the second echelon, which is the engineers. Mm -hmm. in Singapore. Mm -hmm. we set, we, I was a um, radar technician. Right. Maintenance. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we had no main radar equipment there right. at all. So right. I was doing general duties on different equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then 12 of the company, well, there was 112 in the company mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm which was RE's at the time, mm -hmm. uh, we would put, 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 give a put to two heavy attack guns yeah. and four Bofa guns yes. and sent to um, Pelamban oil refinery. Right. The, uh, was that in the Dutch East Indies? That was in the Dutch East Indies. Right. Yes. yes. Very important source of oil, um, which of course the Japanese would have been keen to get hold of. Yes. Right, and then, then what was, then what really happened? Well, the guns were positioned, and uh, we did the maintenance on them. Uh, we got information that the Japanese was going to land by parachute mm -hmm. in the very near future. Well, you knew they were coming by we parachute? Knew they, we knew they were coming, right. yes. It was all the way they were coming, either by sea or parachute. Right, right. To the oil refinery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before they, we got notice that imminent they were going to 
فتح ليش؟ Before they landed, the Dutch flag, the Japanese flag went up on the oil refinery. Before they landed, the Japanese Before they flag. Landed, the flag, Japanese flag went on, up on the oil refinery. What was that? Was that like fifth column or something? I should think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, when they had landed, or were landing, we went out, <coughs> a few of us, we, as you know, we were only 12 men and there wasn't many mm. men apart from in there, apart from the HQ. Mm -hmm. We only had, the only people who had rifles was the engineer, there was the maintain our retire, mm. and we only had 10 rounds of ammunition at that time. Right, you're not really going to do very much then, are you? No. Uh, we went in an armoured carrier to try and get the both men yeah. Out of the oil and and uh, were, were the, by this time were the Japanese parachutists landing? Yes. Right. Went out to get the try and get these men out, but the Dutch turned the guns on us. The Dutch. They ordered us to stop. Right. And retreat. We had to go into the oil refinery and they'd open fire on us. So. What 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 was the reason in there? Did you think? We well, we just think it was fit column work, you know. Right. They'd gone over to the, they gone over to the Japanese to have an easier time because it was their country. Yes. There were white Dutch there as well. Yes. Ah, uh, right. Was was some of the Dutch troops um, native troops in uh, native islanders as well then? Some of them were. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we went out and then we went back at the at night. Yeah. We got managed to get to. The nearest gun to the gun emplacement to the mm -hmm. entrance of the army family. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there, or what was there, they were all dead. They were dead. Mm -hmm. So we came away. Right. Uh, we were, next morning, we were going down the roads and we met an RAF wagon which was loaded with rifles mm -hmm. and ammunition. We asked them if we could have some, and would they, they'd have to be armed. Mm -hmm. They turned around and said they didn't know how to load the rifles, these two young lads. They'd only just arrived in the, in, in the country. Lambs to the slaughter. Mm. Mm. Uh, our commander gave the order to collect as many vehicles as we could to make a withdrawal to the coast. Mm -hmm. To try and get to uh, to try Java. and get a ship and get, get away. A ship and get to yeah. Java. Yeah. We did this. We never saw any Japs. Mm -hmm. um, so was it was it uh, fairly quiet? You not heard no noise of fighting at all. Or? There was very little fighting. Right. Right. Uh, the Japs were had push bikes, some of push bikes, but there were a lot of them in yeah. native clothing. They weren't in uniform. Right. So right. you didn't know who was your friend or who was your enemy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We as I say, it took us about <coughs> two days to get through to the coast. Mm -hmm. And there was a ship just going to Java. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we ditched the bar, the trucks we had mm -hmm. into the sea. Mm -hmm. Got on board I went into Java. Right, right. So you were just by the skin of your teeth, really, managed to get away. Managed from, to get away from yeah. Panama, yes. Yeah. And then when you were in Java, what what was uh, what what happened after that? Well, it was uh, we tried to find our other units in Java, mm -hmm. which was hopeless. So. We got some vehicles again, pinned some vehicles, sold some vehicles, or, or commandeered them. As a better, Acquired. A better one. <laughs> uh, there was very little petrol about except high octane, right. aircraft petrol. So right. That didn't improve the vehicles. No, engine. no, no. Short, uh, short term measure, I thought. That the Japs had taken, more or less taken Java when we got there. So you were just really a little bit in front of them? So we were there and uh, we got orders that uh, 
the Japanese, the, the Dutch were capitulating mm -hmm. on the 8th of March. And the Dutch also were in charge of Java at that time, yes. part of the Dutch East Indies. The Dutch East Indies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we were told to stop fighting on mm -hmm. the 9th of March. 1942, this 1940, would have been. 1942. Yeah. Uh, as I say, you didn't see many Japanese about. Mm. We were just told to make our way to a camp and hand ourselves over there. Right. Right. Uh, we finished up in Surabaya. It is Surabaya now. Right. That is the capital of Java. Java. Right. Uh, we were put into a camp, but before we were put in a camp, we put the wagons in a compound, but we did as much damage to the vehicles without them knowing, mm -hmm. sabotaging them. Yes, so make sure they were no good to them. Make sure that they'd have a lot of work on them. Right. I, right. One, one thing we did was <coughs> quite a number of the um, tow rope on what was. Mm on the front of the vehicle mm. and we put the tow rope round the axles, put it into gear, right. sewed the lever off that put it into gear yeah. and left it like that. When when they started it and just dragged the vehicle into two pieces more or less. <laughs> or it had to jam it that they couldn't yeah. use it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the beer. Yeah. Fairly angry about that, do you? They would, yes. Yeah. They wouldn't know who'd done it like no. they, they blame the natives, I think, more than right. the natives. Right, right. Uh, we were in a camp, then we was on the docks, clearing the docks in different places of what, oh. what they wanted. Oh. Uh, I couldn't say how long we were there. They used to take approximately a thousand or so, so there were a large number of prisoners. Quite a large number of prisoners. Right. You used to take a thousand or more off, mm. and we, I was put into one group eventually. And uh, by the time we we went to Singapore in this boat, it was called the Singapore Maru. I can't remember. Right. So they then they sailed you. Uh, they transported you from Java to Singapore on a on a, a prison ship. Prison so, ship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were down in the holes, right. you had just enough room to lay down. Mm -hmm. uh, you could come up after the old once a day to and use the toilet, which was wooden structures they built on the side of the ship. Right. And probably have a override. If that ship had have been attacked, there would have been no chance. For many, many of the prisoners to escape, surely. No, there wouldn't have been any chance at all. Mm. I don't think there'd been any chance at all. Mm. Uh, there were a few more, there'd be about 2,000 on the boat when we left Singapore, mm. plus troops. Guards. Their yeah. guards. Their guards, okay. uh, Dysentery broke out in the, on yes. the boat. Yes, yes. Uh, we were in the stench of uh, dirt, yes. you know, it was noisy. Yes. You know, yeah. There were rats running about on the you could see them running over you, they used to run over you on the boat. Yeah. Uh, your mates who got dysentery, we all got so much, yeah. we got it yeah. Yeah. severe. Yeah. And men were dying on the boat. Right. And they just uh, put them up, wrap them up and put them overboard. Yes, yes. You had to be there, some of them had to be there. Mm. Uh, you were, that um, week that you, you mm. didn't bother what was happening. Mm. You felt so ill. Yeah, the yes. Mm. Were there many deaths on, on that ship? Through dysentery and disease? I should think mm. about two or three hundred right. or more right. died on that ship before he got to Japan. I went to Kobe in Japan. Did you go to Singapore first? We called it Singapore. You called first. it Singapore first, yes. and then sailed on to Kobe. Sailed on to Kobe. 
And so, how can you remember how long were you on the ship altogether? How many weeks, or was it months? It wasn't months. No, it was, it was weeks. weeks. It yeah. wasn't, I can't remember just how right. long it was. It Must have seen forever, though. Seemed a long while. So you went to Kobe um, on mainland Japan mm -hmm. after losing several hundred comrades to dysentery and disease en route, and you docked in Kobe. And what what was your impressions of it? Of Japan, what did you think? You landed in the enemy well, homeland. It was dark. We didn't see much there. Uh. And they uh, put us on barges and took us to um, Hiroshima. To Hiroshima. The outskirts of Hiroshima, coal mine on the outskirts of Hiroshima itself. Right. Uh, it was winter. Yes. And it, uh, in that part of Japan, the climate's very similar to England. In, in the winter time. In the winter time. Mm. But uh, in summer time, it is it's really a, humid. It's, it's a bit hotter, yes. Yes. Uh, when we got there, it was a privately owned mine. Mm -hmm. A coal mine. A coal mine. Mm -hmm. And they had a English meal waiting for us. An English meal. Proper English meal waiting for us, mm. which we didn't eat a lot, we couldn't eat a lot. Mm. Uh, and they issued us all with a Japanese uniform. Like a prisoner's uniform? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it were one of their old discarded uniforms. Oh, right, right. So you were wearing, like, Japanese military clothing then? Just at the time, if you, until we were, while they got us to work in, which was a few days. Right. They put us in big huts. Mm. Uh, there was uh, 12, 12 in one room. Mm. And we, we was on a, a bed. Well, it was a, like a straw, straw floor. Mm. You know, mat mm -hmm. mattress type. Mm. And that was your living room. And mm. That's mm. where you stopped when you weren't where. Mm. Uh, you slept there. You had, uh, a blanket. So what was the work like in the coal mine? What what kind of hours were you working? In? Well, we were working very long hours. It would be from when they get you up at four or five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it would be late afternoon, mm. sometimes seven o'clock at night before you got back. Was it a deep, was it a deep mine? It was a walking mine. A, a, like a drift mine? A drift mine. Right. It, uh, there were about I think it was in three or four hundred steps yeah. to go down and come back up. And how was the coal transported from the mine? Uh, was there similar to England? Right, it, so it's like tubs. It's tubs, tubs. Tub system. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you were like loading the tubs, working. We were loading the tubs, we digging the coal out. Sometimes more than twelve hours a day, as mm. you say. Yes. Yeah. Um, in general. Um, Apart from the long hours of work, how was the how was the treatment of the Japanese overseers the, to the to the British prisoners? I mean, we hear no, there's so many stories about ill treatment and deliberate cruelty, starvation. And did you witness any of these kind of things? Yes, uh, they were very unpredictable with the Japanese. Mm. Uh, they'd. Uh, Hit you for no apparent reason. Right. Uh, when you came, went down, when you came back out of the mine, uh, you had to. There was a communal bath there, mm. but you couldn't go in the bath until you got all the coal off. You had to wash yourself outside the bath mm. Mm. before you could go into the bath. Mm. Mm. Uh, there was uh, like wooden wooden boxes which you filled with water and threw over yourself. Mm -hmm. Then after you got all the dirt off you could go into the water. Right. Uh, you'd, you were wearing very old clothes because mm. all the time. Mm. Uh, they'd, many a time they decided to have a roll call as you got to got laid down. Right. And you'd all go outside and uh, yeah. 
Yeah. If you, uh, if anybody missing, those they'd count you, then they'd let you go back, and then they'd bring you out again. Yeah. So they were just disrupting your sleep, sleep the all the time. Mm. Mm. If you worked, you got a bowl, a bowl, a cup, a bowl of cooked rice, cold cooked rice to go take down the mine with you. Mm -hmm. And that was like your, it was a your, box. It was in a box. Your midday yeah. meal. Was your midday meal. Yeah. And then when you got back in, you had a bowl of rice and some what we call daikon stew. It was watery stew with like <coughs> um, bits of vegetable in, you know, mm. turnip, similar to turnip and things like right. that. If you were sick, you got one bowl of rice per day. So far less food if you were. If yeah. you were sick, you got less food sick. than if you were working. Right. Uh, right. I was sick for quite a while. What caused your sickness? Uh, I had stomach pain, severe pains, mm -hmm. and the medical, our medical man who was a corporal thought yeah. it was appendicitis. Right. That was your medical orderly for that. Orderly. Yes. yes. Uh, they brought the doctor in and he confirmed it. It was a civilian doctor, a Japanese, a Japanese civilian, civilian doctor. doctor. Mm -hmm. they co he confirmed it. He said I'd have to be operated on. Right. As soon as possible. Yes, to save your life. Mm -hmm. uh, the commanding officer, along with our commanding officer, came to me. Oh, they, they took me to him. Then uh, they told me. And the Japanese officer said he thought I was kidding. He, did, he didn't believe? He didn't believe me. Right. And he said if I hadn't appendicitis, it was sayonara, which in other words means I would be executed. Goodbye. Good, goodbye. Mm. Sayonara. Mm. Right. Uh, they took me into a small hut. Uh, there was a floppy stretcher there on a on, on a stilt. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. There was two hundred watt bulbs above my head. Mm. There was back behind me there was a, bump, a stove, one of the round metal stoves. I don't know if you've yeah, seen these. Like stoves. a pot bellied stove. Yes, that yes, that uh, yeah, yeah. with bamboo canes burning in it. Right. And uh, the doctor says, We have laid me on it, struck me down. I am sorry, but we have no anaesthetic. Right, okay. So, this will hurt. Yes. And they operated on me. I passed out with pain. And when I got back in, I was laying on my bed mm. in my room. Uh, the doctor came in every morning for two or three days. Mm -hmm. uh, it went septic with the wound. Mm -hmm. So they just cut the stitches and left it wide open. And it healed up like that. And it was left. Uh, they uh, wanted you to get you back to work as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. They saw me walking outside the, the hut about three or four weeks after the operation mm -hmm. and they sent me back down the mine. How were you feeling then? Were you feeling? I was a bit groggy. But yeah. You had to go. You had to get make. You, you all helped each other. Yeah. You covered up for each other who couldn't yeah. do much of the work. So. You're very lucky to survive. You, uh, to have surgery, uh, abdominal surgery without anaesthetic and then for the wound to go septic and have to heal, open almost, um, it shows that you must have had a fairly good, a fairly good constitution then. Go, yes. You, know, um, you had youth on your side obviously then. Um, but I suppose there's some measure of skill in the Japanese doctor really to carry out that operation in those circumstances. Um, 
So you got back to work. Now, you said you were outside the city of Hiroshima, and everyone knows the fate of Hiroshima in August 1945. Um, were you still at Hiroshima, uh, in the Hiroshima area at that time? Yes. Do you remember the, what do you remember about the, the bombing of the city, the atomic bombing? Well, on that particular day, they'd given us a day off. Right. We used to get about one day per month off work. Yeah. Uh, we heard the planes flying overhead, and then we heard uh, bombing, like pattern bombing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. A series of explosions. A series of explosions, yeah. and then a big mushroom of smoke. Right. Uh, a proper mushroom. You uh, saw the mushroom cloud? Saw the big mushroom cloud. We didn't know it was an atom bomb at the time. Of course. But all the lights went out. Yeah. The mine flooded, we were told, flooded within half an hour. Completely Because flooded. it was under the sea, completely flooded. Right, right. And uh, that, was, we, when, that was when we gave up if, work. If you'd have been working. If we'd have been working, we... You'd have drowned. Probably wouldn't have got out of the mine. That was real fate then, that you, your one day off a month fell on the day uh, when the bomb dropped? Yes. I think 6th, 6th of August 1945. 6th of August, yes. And so again, another, someone was on your side, I think. That. I think we had someone. We, we, uh, we were very lucky. Mm. We we seemed to be. So the mine was flooded. It was unusable. Um, it might sound a stupid question, but what really was the reaction of your Japanese captors that the day when they had seen the effects of the devastation on on the city? Well, the Jap the, the Japanese guards were moved. That day. The very same day. And another set of guard brought in. Right. Um, everybody, we were all ordered to stay where we were mm -hmm. for security reasons. And uh, it was quite a few, quite a while before we were moved out of the camp. But we did have food dropped by plane. But that would be by al Allied plane, of course. They, they were American planes. American plane, plane, yes. They were yeah. low flying and a lot did, did they realise you were there? They, they knew we were there, yes. Right. Mm. Did you get into the city? To no. You never went into never the city? Never went into the city. Did you not see any of the effects of the bombing? Or, or were you, did you bypass the area completely? We bypassed the area completely. We went to. Um, the other one that was born, Nagasaki. Nagasaki, that's where mm. we were transported to Nagasaki when we came, when we right. moved out of the... Uh, By that time, had the Japanese surrendered? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so when were you then liberated then? What, what happened after the end of the war? Well, at the end of the war, we eventually ran, you know, what they call, met by American troops. Yeah. Put onto a train yes. and taken right round Nagasaki, which was devastated, same as Hiroshima was. Yes, You've course. seen the pictures. Yeah. Uh, mm. And uh, taken to a military camp, well, a American military camp that they've put up for screening you and uh, delousing you, etc. Mm -hmm. And then put onto different uh, ships. Uh, I was put on a small hospital ship to begin with, mm. and then transferred to a, another ship. And we came back by uh, through to uh, America. You went to the US. Yes, San, yeah, San Francisco. Right. What was your? What was not only your own, but the. Um 
the condition of the rest of the released prisoners at that time? How, well, how were you? I was under seven stone mm. when I was released. Mm. Well, you know, when I was mm. released from captivity. Mm -hmm. uh, when we got on the American ship, the feathers, all the feathers, mm. and we developed the berry berry. Made by being too kind, they could, nearly, kind they could have nearly killed you. Could have killed us. Mm. We, we blown it mm. out. I don't mm. know if you've ever seen any more. Mm. When I came into England, I was 44 waist. 44 waist? Waist. Mm. An ab abnormal mm. uh, size, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we went, as I say, we went to San Francisco first and went mm. into an army camp there. Then we went, we were put on a hospital train. Mm -hmm and taken to a uh, place called Tacoma, which is on the Canadian borders. Oh yeah, yeah. You're quite well travelled really. Travelled, yeah. We were transferred onto a CPR train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took us, was it, approximately six days continuously running up, well, on the train, because six across, days. Across Canada. Going right across Canada yeah. to uh, the uh, New York there, what they call it. The, where the big boats were pulling, mm. just around off New York. Right. And, yeah. Uh, we were transferred onto the Queen Mary. The Queen, the Queen Mary, the 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 the, the liner then. The liner, yes. yes. Right. Um, there were quite a number of Dutch troops on there that had never seen any fighting. Yeah. They were also released from Japanese captivity, the Dutch troops. I don't, yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't think they'd been in captivity much. Right. And uh, the OC troops, which on a troop ship, there's an OC troops, mm -hmm. plus the captain of the ship, mm -hmm. ordered the British prisoners of war to be do the Batman duty for these NCOs and officers going into the... Dutch troops and we rebelled about it. Yes. We told him what to do. Right. So he right. says, well, you don't get fed. You don't get fed then if you don't know that, which we replied, we're not bothered. We haven't, we haven't been fed for a long while. <laughs> yes. But the captain... So you starved, half, half starved by the Japanese, mm -hmm. but uh, completely starved by... Um, mm -hmm. A British officer. Well, we weren't because the captain of the Queen Mary told him the British prisoners of war were his guests. Right. And we could go anywhere on the ship with his invitation. And we could also go on. We could go on the bridge if he asked us to. And we had to be treated as human beings. Well, so that we were just normally yes. nothing really happened on the ship. But he was right. taken off in France before we got to England when the OC troops. Was he? Mm. Mm. So how how long did it take you to come back to health once you were back in back in England? Well, a long while. I uh, I suffered a lot of flashbacks and things mm. which I still do still suffer flashbacks now even to, even today always. even today although I'm a lot better yeah uh, I couldn't do my job correctly it was, I was a apprentice auto electrician when I went over when I was called up yeah I yeah. went back to the firm but the uh, the pay was I was only apprentice when I went out, and the pay wasn't much more than apprentice when I went back. Yeah. Uh, I kept having to have time off, and then I got a job. At that time, they were converting petrol engines to diesels. Mm -hmm. I got a job with AEC, who were converting buses to 24. They used the, the, the electrical system had to be converted from 12 volt to 24 volt. Right. And I was doing that, but I collapsed because of 
the intricate work that you do on that, laying mm. down on the, mm. you know, on the mm. dashboards and different things. And I was, I'd, I was ordered to take a rest. Mm. Mm. Uh, they were very good to me. They paid me while I was off, and then they asked me if I'd resign. Right. As uh, didn't say they talked to my doctors and they said think they fit think I was fit enough. Right. My doctor says, "Will you?" I was in a state of not talking and things. Yeah. So I said, "Would I go on to a, a job where I met people?" Yeah. So I went on the buses in Bradford. Right. As a conductor to begin with. Yeah. Uh, that wanted you working with. People, people rather than working on your own with machines. Yes. Yeah. I was a little bit better. Then I met my wife mm -hmm. today. Uh, she lived in Swinton. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I'm at Swinton now. Right. <laughs> uh, but we did stay in Bradford uh, for a while. Right. And then we came over here in 1949. Right. I applied to go on Rotherham Corporation. On the buses? On the buses. Yeah. But I couldn't go on them because the cut-off point for employing people at that time was Rose Hill, uh, the Rotherham oh, side right. of Rose Hill Park. Oh, right. right. So I went to Mexico and Swinton. Right. I was a trained trolleybus driver. You drove the trolleybuses? Yes. And I drove the trolleybuses in from Mexico and Swinton right up to them uh, changing over to diesels. In 1961, I think that was the last... Uh, uh, no, it was before that, wasn't was it? Uh, they thought the last trolley bus ran through in 1961, but we can check that. Gordon, um, today, um, how, how do you feel about um, about Japan and about the Japanese people today. It's a, it's a long time ago. Um, um, but what, from based on your experiences um, as, a, an, as an enemy soldier uh, to the Japanese and then as a, as a prisoner, um, what, what's that left you with? What kind of feelings now? Well, now, uh, the Japanese soldier I'll go back to the Japanese soldier first. They were doing what the Japanese army did do, where the junior soldier was the had to be had to do what everybody else said. Mm -hmm. And it, if you from you was a junior soldier, at one stage they went in stars. He could hit the uh, the person below him, and mm. that went right from the top ranks right to the bottom ranks, right to the lower ranks. That was just the way that they that were. That was the way they, uh, their, the, the discipline their, system. their discipline system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, come, after coming out and getting, going round the roundabout of it, I met Japanese people, mm -hmm. and you get talking to them if you're in a hotel or wherever you are. Uh, one person I met was in uh, Edinburgh uh, Castle, mm. and he was amazed what I had told him mm. had happened in the Japanese. He didn't believe what had happened. A younger person. A younger person. Mm. I said, "Well, it did, and I could send you proof anyway." He says, "Oh, I believe you." He says, uh, "But we were we are taught that uh, you were just as bad as you know you were." You treated us so badly. Right. I said, "Well, I can't vouch for that because no. I never." Uh, but uh, talking to them, they don't know what happened. They were never. Mm. They were never told what the war was. They, you know, it was a fight to their for their country. Mm. Mm. And uh, you can't keep the hatred in to these people now because. Uh, mm. They're more civilised now, and they are very civilised. They're civilised. But some of the old soldiers still have that age in them. I just can't put it to myself to be... To no, you can't, it can't bear, bear grudges down the years. Because, uh, I try and forget it, but you keep mm. bringing it here, you keep 
keeps coming back to you. And today, Gordon, you're the, um, well, for many years, you've been a, uh, a major um, player in, in the activities of the Swinton Age Person Centre. Um, for a number of years, I know you've held uh, committee posts, and, you know, uh, secretary treasurer. Um, how, old, how old are you today in 2002, Gordon? 82. And still, uh, you are doing lots of hours of community work for, for other people. I'm still doing it, but I've cut down a lot, as you know. Yeah. Uh, my priority is trying to, keep, trying to keep this place open, the whole people's centre, trying to get people to come and join the groups that's in the centre, mm. as we're all losing members and we're, mm. we're down now. I also run the Derby and June, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago we had 55 members in, today I have 44 members in. But we are still struggling, but we are still do, I'm still doing the same as I have done from when I, after I, when I took over. In, regards entertainment, taking them out on trips, giving them teas and that, uh, giving them Christmas dinners at Christmas time. Uh, I give them two bonuses a year. You know, but, uh, it's hard work. I could do with more members and more money. Right. I've tried to get money, but I can't get it. Well, thanks very much for your time, Gordon. It's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you.